using it for the wrong purpose. And in that day, when it's all over with, Christ's going to say, what did you do in my name? A lot of people are operating in the wrong spirit. They got some attitude, but they don't have no B attitude. Somebody talk to me now. That, if you're going to get an attitude, get some B attitude. Somebody talk to me now. When they treat you all kind of way, you still love them. When they talk about you, you still show them that you care. That's true. That's true. So the door was closed. They came knocking. Let us in. He says, no. No. It's too late. You know how I feel when you ride up at the bus terminal or the airport? Don't y'all look at me like that. And the flight or the bus is already gone. And you standing on the dock of Amtrak, and you mad with everybody else, but it ain't nobody's fault. If you miss this rapture, it ain't nobody's fault but yours. You can't blame it on nobody else. You can't say it's my son and my daughter, and my brother and my sister, and my mother and my father, and my grandma and my granddad, and my co-worker. If you miss your destination, you miss your departure. Yes. Go ahead and preach. Preach. Can't blame nobody else. No. Oh. Don't say Reverend Walking was holding me in church too long on Sunday. Because no. I'm here to tell you, if you're part of the rapture, I don't care whether you're sitting up in church or on your job. Somebody talk to me. If you're riding the MBTA, somebody talk to me now. Are you laying on the beach? When the day the rapture take place, if you are a child of God and you call by his name, when it happens, wherever you are, you're going to be called. Thank you. The real question is, are you going to be ready? We well, all know the story. They was cast into outer darkness. Because if one don't make the rapture, Somebody talk to me now. God showed me a vision this week about Methuselah. And it was like a parable. And God was telling me, you preach on the days of Noah. I couldn't figure it out at first. He was showing me, I ain't never seen Methuselah nor Moses or Noah. And I was trying to make the connection between the two. And God said, like in the days of Noah. It's coming, saints. You ain't seen nothing. Don't let fear grip your heart by the things you hear and see on the news and in the radio. Because fear will grip your heart. And the Bible said, Satan is the author of fear. The tormentor. He's a father of lies. And the Bible said, according to the book of Isaiah, in that last day, many are going to look on him. And the Bible said, we'll study him narrowly. And say, is he the one that troubles all the nations? Because when you look at him, he's nothing to behold. But you would say he's the one that created all this because he first was an angel of light. The Bible said he was perfect. He was in charge of all heaven's choir. The Bible said he was beautiful as the beauty of all the stones on the face of the earth. And he glittered and glamoured. And he was so beautiful to look upon. And because of his beauty and his convention, yeah. conviction to those, he took a third of heaven's angels. Yeah. That's persuasion. How can somebody persuade you? They were angels with God. And yet they was convinced to rebel against God. And Jesus said, Behold! I saw Satan cast out of heaven like lightning. God got so upset and so mad he threw him out so fast. He was like lightning that shot to the heaven. You know, you look up and you see the lightning flash. And you know, it always lightning flash before the thunder. Because light is quicker than noise. That's right. That's right. He beheld him shooting under the heaven. That's right, man. I'm going to say that was like Haley's coming. Mm -hmm. Satan didn't cast out of heaven. Yes, he but he says, Whoa! Yes. To the inhabitants yes. that live on the earth. Yes. For Satan.
Satan come down with gray wrath. Yes. Yes. And he's yes. mad at you and he's mad at me. Yes, he, All right. he don't want this gospel to go forward. He don't want you to come here. He don't want you to worship the Lord. He don't want you to praise God. He wants you mad with one another, upset with one another. Yes. Got an attitude. Yes. He don't want you to pray and fast for somebody. He wants you to eat Burger King and get greasy inside. Mess up and clog your arteries. Somebody talk to me now. Y'all didn't give me but a few minutes, so I'm going to come home with this. You know, when the children of Israel was out in the wilderness, the Bible said, I got to stay over here. The Bible said that they railed against God and they railed against Moses. And while they were out in the wilderness, they complained and murmured. Yes, they did. Yes, yes, they did. One of the young ladies I passed this morning, I says, good morning to you. And I said, how's everything? She says, I won't brag and I won't complain. I said, that was my message today. <laughs> Ain't nothing to brag about. Look at somebody that said, I won't brag. And I won't complain. I won't complain. <laughs> well, they was out in the wilderness and they have left and in the desert. They was out and there was trouble because it ain't but so many ways you can cook this kind of bird. Quail meat. And, and that, that, that special light bread that came off the earth and, and they got tired of it. And sometimes church people get tired of the same old thing. They want to try something different and new. Well, I ain't going to give you nothing new. You keep coming here, you're going to get the same gospel. Amen. Don't be looking with no itching ears. I wish you preached something funny or something new. You just might want to stop scratching your ear because I ain't preaching nothing. Okay, somebody talk to me now. The Bible says they complain so much that it got on the nerve of God. And when God got angry, the Bible said that while the children of Israel was out in the wilderness complaining that God sent for a fiery serpent. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Yes, yes, he did. Now, you might never have been bit by a snake. And I don't think nobody want to. Amen. <laughs> but you've been bit by Satan. Yes. Somebody talk to me now. And when he bites you, he bites and he backs off to see what you're going to do. Now see, you'll respond to the situation or the circumstances. But if your life is hidden in Christ, you don't need to worry about these things. you got to learn to shake him back off of the fire. The Bible says all these fiery serpents came from everywhere. And they was biting the children of Israel and folks were dying left and right. They recognize we have sinned against God and we sinned against Moses. Moses, please and call and cry out to the Lord on our behalf. Yes. Moses was a good servant. He went and cried out. Yes. But thousands were dying. Yes. And God says, Moses, I want you to take. I want you to take a serpent of brass. And I want you to have you see, Aaron was good at fixing the idols. Somebody talk to me now. He said, fasten it on a pole. And everybody that get bit, if you look at this fiery serpent, a serpent of brass on this pole, and if you look at it after you've been, you will live. Wow, God let him look at an idol because see, all their attention in the wilderness was only directed to idols. And they had more confidence in a handmade thing by man than having faith in a God they couldn't see. So many that looked upon this brass serpent, the Bible said they lived. It was a miracle of God in the wilderness. And you say, what's that got to do with Jesus? Jesus said, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so shall the Son of Man be lifted up. And Jesus said, if 